Um, I am just getting my day started. Um, and I wanted to talk to you about that because, um, so often I hear, um, people talking about the mental health of our communities, um, the individuals, but I want to talk to you about those people who, those, those non-professional people that those individuals reach out to and um, for support, but who supporting them. That's something no one, I, I haven't seen this conversation about. I see the conversations about burnout and what to do when you're burnout and this, that, and the other, but there's usually some support around you and how are we, how are those individuals supporting themselves in order to be an anchor to you as you go through whatever you're going through. I bring this up because um, last night, so I was working on a project, um, all weekend, so I didn't get to get to my homework, um, like I, I should have, um, actually. And so I had planned on, um, getting my homework done starting at five o'clock. I'd set my alarm. I, you know, was ready to get started. And literally like five Oh four, I see someone I care about. And these are all people I care about. I had three situations, a person I care about mentioning something on Twitter, um, that I was like, okay, she seems like she needs a little bit of support. Let me, you know, provide, you know, say something encouraging to her. So then I was going to get back, you know, into work and, and, Minutes later, um, the face I get a Facebook, um, what they call it, Facebook Messenger, of a friend who's re really been struggling and has not has been keeping it to herself. So at this point, it's kind of um, it's just it's heartbreaking when you hear a, a friend's story and there's really nothing you can do, um, but you know provide encouraging words, and then it's like. With every contact that I had with the the Twitter, um, with the with the messenger, and then the next one, it's like a little bit more of that energy sticks to you, um, and you can't shake it off. So the last um, energy change was, I guess maybe thirty minutes later, there was a phone call um, by someone who was his, you know, um, who was um, going through something, and and and. And was pretty serious. So it was not something I could say. The other two were, I can pick up my phone and, 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 and to engage when I wanted to. But this one was, it was not something I, could, I felt I could walk away from. Because um, it was pretty serious. And um, and again, it was just like this this thing that was stuck on, that this this energy that sticks to you. And I wanted to talk to, to, talk to you about this because... I know I have a bit of training. So I'm, as I said, I'm special needs certified. And I also worked in the school system. I was a high school teacher um, where my administration um, allowed me to do a lot of counseling and, and discipline of students that e that weren't even um, on special needs, just the general population, just because of the relationships I had with them. So when I talk about um, <clears throat> why I left education, I really don't get into the depths of it, but I can say that was number one. Um, having the skill to, now I'm not a certified, a licensed counselor, um, but I've been in enough situations, I have enough training that I can at least be an intermediary until the professional licensed people can step in. And that is pretty stressful when you're dealing with that. And I could tell you that was, that led to me saying, you know what, I'm gone. I need to give this tech thing a try. Um, and it's the same thing when you're in tech, people, you'll, people say, oh, you're so good at something. And then they encourage you to do something, but they don't know the, the, I'm trying to figure out the word I'm trying to say. It's not ramifications is not the word I'm looking for, but they don't know the residual of what is being left behind every time, um, you, you're dealing with something and what they don't see it. And a lot of it came out for me last year, dealing with the inclusion and diversity stuff. It's like, I found myself being a support for other people and not really taking care of myself and then not being able to get out of bed, um, for two days, not because I was depressed, but as I've said before, Mental exhaustion is takes me way longer to um, to um, um, to come back from than physical exhaustion. I can recover from physical exhaustion 
much quicker than I could recover from mental exhaustion. And so it was like these very intense mental exhaustive moments. And so last night was one of those moments. And I just, um, again, I was just, I've been just chilling all morning, have stuff to do, but I just didn't have the energy or the mental capacity to deal with it. Because again, these things were so, <clears throat> again, they leave this trail of energy. And it may be a gross analogy, but what comes to my mind is when you see a snail and they leave this, this thing of slime. And it's not that the thing I'm saying that these people's issues were slimy, but there is a, um, a cause and effect. There's a residual of what, it, what they leave behind. And so I want to talk about how do you, as somebody who wants to support your friends, support your mate, support your spouse, support your child, support whatever, some just some tips on how to do that so that you are able to take care of yourself. Because if you burn out, then, you know, it's like that's no good either. And it reminds me, I really understand the, the all the safety um, um the safety stuff more now, like, you know, on an airplane, put your mask on before you put your kid's mask on or lifeguard training. Um, you don't see, more lifeguards die because, uh, you know, they're trying not to be drowned by the drowning person. Well, not more, more lifeguards, more individuals drown while trying to save a drowning friend because they don't know how to make sure they're safe first before they reach out to help a drowning friend. So this is the kind of this is the kind of conversations I want to have because um, they're necessary. And so, tip number one: if it's possible, if if it's nothing um, an emergency, um, find a way to lend support. But when you feel your anxiety levels rising, find a way to. Um, even if it's a temporary break, find a way to step away from the situation, get yourself together, get your emotions together, and then go back in. Don't, if it's, if you're finding yourself in a situation where you're dealing with someone and they're just venting and uh, <clears throat> they're just upset or whatever, but they're, this is not like major depressive kind of thing, but you find that you're having a physical effect, it's affecting you physical, uh, physically, you know, your friend's now homeless, your friend, you know, um, somebody's just um, um, lost their job, whatever, and it's, it's just really affecting you, find a way to um, just step away for a moment and breathe, cry, do whatever you need to do to get that stuff out um, and then go back and engage again and, and explain that to them. Um, I had to do that last night. I had to say um, with the call that... Um, that I had to, um, once I realized that, so that, as I said, that situation was pretty bad, but once I realized that that situation was subsiding, that that individual was no longer, um, thinking about doing harm to themselves, I had to now, um, step away, um, uh, because I am not a professional. So the, that's, that's the one thing, uh, um, Make sure you're taking these breaks. Make sure you're putting your mask on. Make sure you're doing that before you get drowned in all these things. Process what you're feeling. Process um, when when someone comes to me and it comes to you and there's absolutely nothing you can do to help. Um, let's say they need money, you just don't have it or whatever, and we start feeling we start beating up on ourselves because we really want to help that person out. Just understand that. I mean shit happens. We can't, it's, it's so hard. It is so hard. And if all you can do is provide an ear or a shoulder, then that's something. Um, and so what I don't beat yourself up if you don't have everything they need to, for support, um, help them put, put, put together a network. And that's one thing I love about my, my sister friends is they're, they're a group of us. So if one of us is going through, there's somebody in the group that can step up and do something. Um, and that's the one thing. But it's it's hard when someone wants something from you and you can't give it to them. It's just like, oh, my God, what, what? it's like you start questioning your your value, your value as a friend, your value as a support person. You just start questioning all that. And I, I, I would caution you, caution you to um, be mindful of that and, and, and um, be be careful about doing that because what that does is start you down a spiral. And lastly is the major one. Um, um, as I said, I am not a licensed counselor, but I have 
tons of experience in crisis intervention, um, uh, conflict management, conflict resolution, um, mediation, all these things. And the majority of people don't. So if you are in, are facing a situation where someone is saying they're going to um, intending to hurt themselves or hurt someone else, it is not a time to talk. It's a time to call someone who's professionally capable of dealing with that. And if that means that you your actions cause your friend or whatever to be put on a 72-hour hole or to go to jail for that moment, then that's what you've had to do because you do not want the responsibility of something that you're not trained to deal with. You just do not. In schools, they call it the hot potato. So as, a, as an educator, I by law, I am man, I'm considered a mandated reporter. So if I hear of abuse of a child, if I don't even have to see it, if I overhear a conversation, if I see something on somebody's phone, that's why I tell students, oh, do not show me your phone, because if I see it, I have to report it. If there's a situation, you need to be in that mindset. If you feel that this, your this person's behavior is to harm themselves or someone else's. This is not the time for you to um, for you to just listen. It's not. It's the time for you to step up and call someone who can help them. Please, please, please do that. Um, because and you might feel shitty in the, in the moment of doing it. But again, this is not. If you're not trained to do this. Um, then this is in your best interest of being a support and that person's best interest of being an anchor for them. Will they be mad at you? Maybe. Will they never speak to you again? Maybe. But at least you know that you've done what you could to ensure the safety, their safety and potentially the safety of the people around them. So I just wanted to, like I said, just wanted to talk about that. <clears throat> um, because again, this cause the hashtag cause a scene is about having these challenging conversations um, and burnout and stress and depression and 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 whatever name or diagnosis people have or whatever it's affecting a lot of people and I don't think it's on the rise much I would say what I think is that because of the technologies we have it's we see it where before we didn't see it as much um, and so you can just be on Facebook or Twitter and you just see somebody you care about discussing something that's, oh my God, you just didn't know about and you don't know how to deal with it. So again, just take care of yourselves. That's what's most important because when you take care of yourselves, we take care of our community and then our community can take care of all of us. So thank you and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.